Welcome everyone to the January 8th NBA Slate Preview here on the Fantasy Crunch YouTube page. Uh, I'm CJ Kaltenbach, otherwise known as The Siege. If you haven't already, subscribe and like. Simply put, more subs, more likes, more videos. Keep it simple for you. So please do that. It helps us out. If you want to leave a comment too, uh, we'll gladly take those as well. All right, nine game slate. This is actually a really, really good one. Uh, there's a lot of options. So I'm going to go game by game here using DraftKings pricing. Uh, just so I don't miss any of the, any really important plays on, on the slate. Um, tons of injury news, uh, tons of potential value, but ten, tons of questionable players. So, of course, if you're looking for that up-to-date information as the day goes along, fantasycruncher.com. All our articles over there, free, absolutely free. So check that out as well. All right, let's do it. First game on the board. Uh, San Antonio at Boston, uh, six and a half point spread, no total because we're still waiting on Kemba New Walker news and Daniel Tice news. Um, if Tice sits, basically the only center left for the Celtics is Enos Cantor, 5,600, would just simply be too cheap. He'd have to be playing in those upper 20 minutes. Uh, so we haven't had that situation yet this year. Uh, really, the Celtics have always had two or three guys at center. Uh, but today, it would basically be just Enos Cantor and D Grant Adams a against the Spurs team that plays a lot of uh, Aldridge and lately has been playing a bunch of Trey Lyles. So we we'll definitely need that size. So 5600 would be a pretty fair price for him. Other than that, you know, the Celtics prices are kind of fair uh, for everyone with Kemba out. Tatum, Brown, Hayward, they're all fine options, but you're not getting any sort of superstar value. Marcus Smart, 5600 not a great matchup against DeJounte Murray. I think he's fine, but he'd have to really perform now at this price to hit a ceiling. So I don't think you have to have him if Kemba sits. If Kemba plays, uh, I don't have any interest in the Celtics whatsoever. On the Spurs, LaMarcus Aldridge, pretty good play. Uh, Celtics front court, pretty poor. Um, I know earlier this year he was just absolutely dreadful, but in the past he's had monster games against this Boston front court. And simply put, like the, the Celtics just don't have the size to handle him right now. So if he plays center, he should be able to have success, 7300 I really do like that price a bunch today. DeMar DeRozan's okay, but the Celtics have a ton of wings. Not a great matchup. DeJounte Murray's okay, but... You know, the Spurs are playing a bunch of guys recently, so this isn't like a situation where I'm just like desperate to get the Spurs into teams. Uh, it, like, it's cool, like, if, you know, it, there was a reason to, but, you know, last game the Spurs ended up having a 10 man rotation, and that's just kind of tough to really project for fantasy purposes. So um, I, I'm going to stay away from the Spurs here, basically outside of Aldridge. That's probably the most boring game on the slate, so let's find another one then. Toronto at Charlotte, uh, we've got a 209 total Toronto 3.5 point favorites. Uh, the news here, uh, Marvin Williams questionable, Michael Kidd Grosser's questionable, Fred Van Fleet, Siakam and Gasol all ruled out, Norman Powell is doubtful. So we're going to get another situation kind of like we saw tonight uh, with Toronto, uh, where we have a lot of usage available for Lowry and Serge Ibaka. I'm um, just going to show you real quick. Toronto. Let's put Lowry on the floor uh, with Ibaka. And we'll take off Fred Van Fleet, Marcus Saul, Pascal Siakam, and we'll even take out Norman Powell. Because he's a decent usage guy as well in these situations. And we look at fancy points for a minute. I mean, we haven't had much of a sample size. It's just really been this last couple games. We see Kyle Lowry 1.3. Uh, we see OG Aminobi at 1.14. Um, didn't play well tonight, but I, I do think this is a really good rebound spot for OG. Because uh, I, I do think in these type of roles, he should be performing well. Like, if even if I take off Norman Powell, for example, OG Aminobi still is performing well in these minutes. And, and so I just, I just kind of think he's going to be a fancy point per minute in this kind of spot. Good matchup here against Charlotte. Pretty weak against the wing position. So OG... Checks in at 5,500. That might be a, a bit much for me. I think there's still a ceiling here at 5,500. But it's not, like, super obvious. I think over on FanDuel where he's cheaper, he's even better. But, you know, Kyle Lowry is only 8,600 going up against Charlotte. Hard to ignore that. Serge Baca is only 7,800. Hard to ignore that as well. On the Charlotte side, you know, more of the same. Uh, they all have GPP upside here. Graham, Rozier, P.J. Washington, Miles Bridges, uh, Cody Zeller, 
if he ever gets the minutes. But I, I, unless you could tell me which one of these guys is going to crush, I don't really see it. So for me, if I was playing more guys in this game, I'd start go back to Toronto and, and say, okay, which one of these value plays do I want to play? Do I want to play Chris Boucher against a team that plays pretty big? Do I want to play Patrick McCaw? Do I want to play Terrence Davis? Although I don't think he played a whole lot tonight. Um, he didn't. So Matt Thomas is back. It's really tough to just play these wings. Patrick McCaw's a going to play a lot of minutes, but just really isn't going to do a whole lot with him. Uh, Oshadi Brissett played a ton of minutes. He kind of took all of the uh, Terrence Davis minutes here tonight. Shot well. So, you know, I, I think there's an option here. Like, I think it's fine. But, again, if the Toronto's going to start playing eight to nine bodies, the value in Toronto was simply them not playing a ton of guys. So, I don't really need to force this situation either. I think it's fine. I think Lowry and Ibaka are the best plays, and then OG, where he's cheap. But other than that, again, there's a lot of other good spots on the slate. Just because these games start early does not mean we have to get carried away with them. So that's what I'm going to do is try not to get carried away with them. At least early on, you know. Could, injury news could happen, change my mind. But as of now, it's certainly not. Uh, right now, we don't really have a total for Miami and Indy, and that's because we've got a ton of injury news. Uh, Sabonis so is questionable with a knee. Brodden's been already listed as a game time decision. Uh, Jimmy Butler's listed as probable, and Justice Winslow is questionable, but he did participate in practice. I'll start with the Heat. Uh, the Heat are pretty much unplayable if Justice Winslow returns. I basically would expect to have 10 guys or 9 guys in the rotation, all basically playing the same amount of minutes. Maybe you could play a BAM against Miles Turner with no Sabonis, but other than that, like all the guards and wings would be getting a lot of less minutes and usage with Winslow back, so that's kind of a pretty strong stay away from me. I like Bam. He's really strong. Center's a pretty good position today. He just really hasn't kind of been trying to force it because he hasn't had to recently. Uh, his usage has dropped a little bit. Makes sense. Drogic's back. Everyone else is back. So he can kind of go back to his little more traditional role. So he's fine here, but you know I don't really see a need to be playing, paying above 8300 for a guy who's not even sporting a 20% usage rate on the season. With all these guys healthy, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Pacers, we kind of have the exact opposite situation. We've got to see what's going on with Sabonis and Brogdon. If Sabonis sits, uh, Miles Turner becomes one of the best players in the sleep. Uh, 5,600, he would play all the center minutes, play those upper 30 minutes, get a little bit more usage. I think we'd see the, this usage rate go back into the 20s for sure. Uh, Bam and Obayo is a nice rim protector, but uh, Miles Turner could definitely stretch the floor. So that would be an option. If Brogdon sits, Aaron Holiday is still a very good option at 5400 just coming off a really poor game in Charlotte, guess what? Players have bad games. The price has dropped, so I'll take advantage of that in what's a pretty good matchup. Last time they played Miami, too, he played quite well, sport, putting up 55, or 55, 35 uh, fantasy points um, and playing 30 minutes in a pretty similar situation. So I, I don't mind that as well. Warren and Lamb are just too expensive right now on DraftKings. You're basically paying for the ceiling shooting performance. So that's not really anything I have, honestly, any interest in right now whatsoever. All right, this is where the slate gets a little bit fun. Washington Wizards, Orlando Magic. Orlando Magic, 10-point favorites. We'll start with the Wizards. Bradley Beal, questionable. Davis Bertons, doubtful. Jonathan, I, I'm sorry, and Garrison Matthews is uh, out. In addition to Jonathan Wall, Ryu, Bryant, Bertons. So... This is where I have to start counting how many players we got, right? Because they waived Jonathan Williams, um, so we're down to players. So if I take out all the guys that are out, and let me just rule out Bradley Beal for the sake of it here, uh, we're, we're down to 10 bodies. And, and these are definitely situations when you're down to 10. Oh, I'm sorry, we're down to eight, nine bodies because I forgot to get out Mo Wagner. Anytime you see nine bodies, that's a pretty solid start place that you might want to start considering to play guys. Um, Admiral Schofield, too, basically hasn't been playing. Uh, he's been playing two to three minutes. And so basically now we're back down to an eight-man rotation. And that just means it's going to be big minutes for everyone. Big minutes for Jordan McRae, 6,600. This seems insane. But if Bradley Beal's out, he's going to take 20-plus shots. And, and, you know, where are you going to get 20-plus shots for 6,600? I guess a team that doesn't do well against wings. You're really not going to get that in a whole lot of spots. So Jordan McRae, for me, is a player that's going to be 
high on the list. You know, look at the usage rate, 41, 30, 30. Uh, 30 percent usage rates for 6600 do not grow on trees so I, I acknowledge definitely not the most talented uh, talent is definitely something we have to consider but you know we look at these minutes you know 33 plus minutes and 1.08 fantasy point per minute basically puts them at a projection around 34 fantasy points which for 6600 pretty darn good as for the rest of these guys you know it gets a little tricky pretty quick Isaiah Thomas and Ish Smith are going to split most of the point guard minutes uh, maybe they'll play some two together. Let's see. Isaiah played 23. Ish played 31. So Ish played a little bit of the two, which, okay. Maybe I'll have to get some Ish Smith. But he's just been shooting the ball really well. Are those minutes the first thing to go? I think they probably are the first thing to go if, you know, he starts to stop shooting well. So I, I don't want to pay for the ceiling. Troy Brown put up a nice game against Denver. Uh, I actually thought he played pretty well against Boston. Uh, not really a good matchup for him whatsoever, but I, I thought he held his own. And the price is now back down to 5400 because of that tough matchup. This one's a little bit better. No Jonathan Isaac, so they'll be starting another guard. So don't look at this DVP number because they're not running out the same defense they have most of the season. So I, I definitely don't mind a Troy Brown at 5400 in this spot. You know, the rest of these other guys just... You're just not good at basketball, right? So it's like, it's really hard to just be like, hey, you know what you should do? You should play this guy. Mahimi's not only going to play like 24 to 28 minutes. Really tough to promote him in a ce like the first ceiling against Vooch. So really for me, it's Jordan McRae and Troy Brown. That's kind of the ceiling, guys. This is a total I'm going to look at. If this total gets to 215, 220, then I'm going to have to start thinking about who the third option might be, but... If the total stays below that, I'm really just going to focus in on McCray and Troy Brown. Uh, and I get that someone, if you've got a Magic 8 ball and you can tell me which one of these other guys goes off, I roster them, but I definitely don't. So I'm not going to try to get too cute. It's nine games. Don't really need to go there. Orlando Magic side, it's the Washington Wizards. Everyone loves to play the Washington Wizards. Uh, the price on Vooch has gone up a little bit. Nothing crazy, 9000 Mahini's been pretty good. That's the one thing I would caution you on. Is the Wizards defense has been much better with Mahini. I think I was listening to a podcast the other day, and I'm pretty sure it was the Tonk Don podcast, where they said that their um, defensive rating was 17 points better when Mahini was on the floor. So he kind of is a competent defender. So I kind of have been trying to focus on wings more. So a guy like Terrence Ross at 4,800 would appeal a little bit more to me than maybe Vooch. But Vooch is still a fantastic option. Aaron Gordon's still too cheap. Hasn't flashed the ceiling game yet, but it's kind of coming. Double doubles in each of the last two. Just hasn't put the steals and blocks and assists together, but I don't think that's impossible. So, especially against this Wizards team, I think there's definitely ceiling there as well. Really, this whole team, they're, they're ceiling here with all these guys. There just isn't the play that I'm going to just, you know, jump off the page for it. Like, let's just double check that I'm not missing anything. Orlando Magic. We'll take off. Oh, not, oops. We'll take off Amino. We'll take off Jonathan Isaac. And, you know, there really isn't a player that's just. I mean, Vooch is 1.41 DraftKings points per minute. <sighs> kind of a small sample size. Um, no shooting luck, though. That's always nice to see. Maybe. So maybe that maybe maybe Vooch is an option, especially against the Wizards. There should be rebounds to be had pretty easily. So uh, maybe I'm a, I was a little low on Vooch, but I, I am a little worried about the matchup with Mahini. But if he's a 1.4 fantasy point per minute guy, playing 31 minutes, tough to ignore him in this spot at the very least. Okay, I think that's it for this game. I don't really see anything else. Fultz, Augustine are all priced up, and all the guards are healthy. Yeah, I think we can safely move on. Houston and Atlanta. Oh, man, this game is going to be nuts. So, we've got a 8-point favorite for your Houston. 235 total. Bruno and Jabari are out for the Hawks. Russell Westbrook is out for rest. Why is he resting, you ask? Tomorrow night, they play in Oklahoma City. A game I suspect that Russell Westbrook might have some slight interest in showing up for. But that's tomorrow's show. That leaves us today, which leaves just James Harden with no Russell Westbrook. 
So to remind us all of how amazing James Harden is without Russell Westbrook, let us put it in together. Plug it in. And we've got James Harden at basically two DraftKings points per minute. That basically makes him unfadeable. The Literally the best reason I have to not play James Harden is a quasi... I mean, I guess it was kind of, kind of kind of serious, but not like scientifically done study that James Harden plays awful in t in cities with great strip clubs. I can present a few to you. Atlanta, although that was in Houston last year. At Atlanta, okay, okay. Um, you know, to, uh, let's see, there's a couple other cities that were listed where like he just does statistically worse. I mean, I'm not suggesting you fade James Harden, but if, if that's my best reason, I got. That just shows you how awesome a play he is at 12-8. I mean, two fancy points per minute. Fastest team in the league. It, there there's really is no reason to fame James Harden here. Um, other than that. Like, that's all I got for you. And that's a terrible reason, right? So, um, you know, 12-8. Look, that means we've got to find value. And, and you know, we're going to have to find value. And some of it's going to be ugly. But, simply put, if James Harden puts up 80, you, you have to have him. And then you got Trey Young on the other side, who, without Westbrook, he can do whatever he darn well pleases. And I don't think that's going to really stop. And he's only 9,700. So that's an interesting option. The Atlanta, wing, the Atlanta wing guys are getting too expensive for my tastes. Like, I can't play, pay 6,200 for Kevin Herter. I can't pay 55,000 for DeAndre Hunter. So, like, they at least priced up the rest of the Hawks to the point where it becomes relatively simple. It's Trey Young, maybe a John Collins in a stack. But that's about it. And, you know, Clint Capella, too, kind of priced up. Not out of play here totally against Atlanta. But I'm not wild about it. Their centers I certainly like better. And it's like, okay, who's the next best guy? Capella? And then after that, it's like... Gary Clark's not even on the team anymore. They waved him. So it's like Eric Gordon. Pick the shooter. Pick a shooter that has a hot day. They're all super cheap. But, again, you're going to need that magic eight ball. If you got it, let me know. Uh, I, I'd love to to uh, enjoy your, your magic eight ball for a day. If you can tell me which one of these wing players goes off. But, you know, I, I, I sadly, it doesn't exist. So... Will I take shots at, with these guys? Yeah, if some value doesn't open up, I, I think that's a definitely a this is a situation I'd like to attack. It's a two thirty five total, so it's not one that I'm just like trying to run away from. But there really isn't just this obvious. Oh my god, I have to have an option here. Um, okay, I think that's it. But this is a game like if you get stuck late in the day and you're like, oh, I need a value play. This is a game I'd circle back to look and see who's starting for Houston. That type of thing. Uh, Chris Clemens is the guy, too, that's probably my favorite here. Um, he just signed a new contract. And when Russ Brooks has been out, he's played really well. Uh, put up a couple monster fantasy games. So that's the guy I would probably focus on the most if Westbrook's out. Okay. Let us move on to Denver at Dallas. Dallas minus three, 278 and a half. We have a total here because we have all the news we got. Will Barton has been ruled out uh, for this game. Uh, he has a personal matter to attend to. Paul Millsap is probable with that knee. Chris Depps Porzingis is still out. And let me just make sure I got Denver and Dallas only in here. Okay, so the, the first thing I want to kind of figure out is who's going to start for for them? So I'm going to put all the other starters on the floor. Uh, Millsap and Jokic. And I'm kind of curious to see who's going to start. Oh, I have to take Will Barton off. So as you can see, um, basically we have yet to see this this year. Right? So as you can see, of the 647 minutes this, they have played, uh, 547, 540, 75 of them have had uh, Will Barton on the floor. Torrey Craig has played the others. But a lot of this was early in the season before Michael Porter Jr. was healthy. So I'm going to try to take off like Gary Harris and see where I get. You know? 
but Beasley gets more minutes here. Monty Morris gets more minutes. If I take Millsap off and I put Harris back on, you know, it's some Jeremy Grant, but that makes sense. It's more of a traditional 4-for-4 four four swap. I want to get Michael Porter Jr. in my lineups today. This is what I want. That's what I want to do. I want them to start Michael Porter Jr. at the three. Am I going to get that? I mean, it's, I'm more likely to get it than some of the other options. It could be Mike Malik Beasley, who I don't think is a terrible option. I, I can't imagine they're starting Torrey Craig with Malik Beasley and Michael Porter Jr., but I, I guess it's physically possible for them to do. I just don't really expect it. If I don't have news before lock, I'm going to play Malik Beasley, I think, and Michael Porter Jr. Like, they're free. So, like, Michael Porter Jr. is 3,800, and the guy's just a beast when he plays. You know, 23 minutes, 33 fantasy points, 26, fantasy, 26 minutes, 28 fantasy points, 19 minutes, 23 fantasy points. Like, the guy gets minutes, he plays well. And I think he will do that in this spot. So, and Michael Porter Jr. started in place of Gary Harris. I think that's a pretty solid sign that that's what they'll do, too. That's one. I didn't think of that. So I should have put Harris and Barton on the floor. I took Barton off, but let me put him on. Because they could just play, slide him over. And as you can see, Beasley's played a bunch of those minutes, and so has Monte Morris. So I think we'll get Malik B. I think we'll get a... Actually, wait. How is that possible? I'm confused. How did we get to there? I'm going to go back and watch that. But I think we get Michael Porter Jr. starting. I do. I really think we get Michael Porter Jr. starting. Could be Malik Beasley. Either way, I like whoever starts. Uh, I think they're both good options. I think they're good fantasy point-per-minute players off the bench. Uh, we've seen Michael Porter's over a fantasy point-per-minute. Malik Beasley, point eight. Uh, Malik Beasley's 3K. Porter Jr. is 3,800. Both are fantastic options against Dallas. Dallas plays a little bigger, so I could see him going with Porter. Uh, get some more size on Luka Doncic, but, um, you know, it, this will be just be a whatever Malone wants to do. I don't think we'll have a real good read of this before the game. But I think they're both perfectly good value options. Dallas, on, on the other hand, you know, I, I think I've done this twice, but I'm just going to keep doing it just to remind you. You know, I, I said that it's almost impossible to fade... James Harden and Luka Doncic fits right in the same category. Two fantasy point per minute player. And this is a good matchup against Denver. So, you know, you're saying, but CJ, that's a lot of salary. Yeah, that's a lot of salary. That is a lot of salary cap. I, I am not the first to deny that. I think it might even be close to half your salary cap. Uh, let me take a look. I think, I think it's pretty close to half your salary cap. It's, uh, what is that, 25-1? It's half your salary cap, but guess what? If those guys put up 75 fantasy points, you're going to need them both. And there's really nothing that, like, what what have we seen from Luka Doncic to suggest that he's not going to do it? Like, okay, maybe he doesn't get exactly the triple-double again, but he's going to get you 35 points, 10 rebounds, like 9 assists, like 68 fantasy points. I, I just... And I know it's going to be near impossible to fit these two in together, but I, I'm not sure what else to do. Like, this is a math-based game, right? And I've got two really obvious math plays. And it's like, you know, like, let me bank this 120 to 140 fantasy points between these two guys, and I'll figure it out from there. And that's kind of where I'm leaning right now is just, you know, figure it out from there. Find the value plays. Like, yeah, some of them aren't going to be fun. Some of them are going to be those bad da Houston players we talked about. And some of them will be some bad Pelicans we're going to talk about. And some bad Knicks. And some bad Utah. And some bad Warriors. And some good Milwaukee guys. But like guys that have huge healings and very low floors. I, I think the winning team tomorrow has Luka Doncic and James Harden on it. I, I, I really do. And, you know, look, look, things can definitely change. They can definitely change. And I, I'm not going to try to, you know, beat the drum like you have to do this. Just if the slate was starting right now, I would be making sure that J James Harden and Luka Doncic were locked in my teams. 
and I would do everything else around it possible to make that happen. Might be crazy, might not be crazy, but that's where I'm leaning. I, I just, Luka Doncic is such a good option. Um, you know, so maybe some value debt. Mavericks are an option. I mean, Maxi Kleber at 5,500 isn't a great price, but it's okay. Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith at 4700 I guess is okay, but not great. Tim Hardaway Jr. finally had that shooting game in the first half and then didn't, couldn't make anything in the second half. DeLon Wright. Like, they're playing a lot of bodies, right? They're still playing 10 guys. Is that right? Three, six, nine, ten guys. So, you know, you're going to have to kind of hit lightning in a bottle to, to find the guy who gets hot. But, again, that's what we're talking about. You know, fit Luka and James Harden, that's what you're going to have to do. So... All these guys are definitely in the value pool that you're going to kind of be trying to find the best options from. Also, that's why I like Michael Porter Jr. and Malik Beasley so much. Same game, cheap, and you know they don't have to do go super nuts. And if Luka hits his ceiling, this game's going to be competitive, and one of them will be on the floor in competitive game. So you kind of got that nice correlation going for you as well. Uh, Chicago at the Pelicans. Uh, Chicago, uh, New Orleans is a five-point favorite here. Drew Holiday has been ruled out with an elbow. Wendell Carter Jr. has been ruled out with an ankle. So that leaves us a front court situation for Chicago, which is what we thought we were going to get last time, <laughs> which is uh, where we thought we were going to get uh, some Thad Young chalk. Now, the price has gone up, of course, because, well, you know, this time Wendell Carter Jr. was ruled out a little earlier. 5400 probably a smidge too expensive for my taste. Uh, I think I'd rather play Daniel Gafford at 48 but that's not even that fair of a price. That's a little bit much. So, you know, you have to make a decision on the Bulls. Like, I don't have the money to pay 6400 for Thomas Um I, I don't have, you know, the money for all that sort of stuff, so... Uh, for sure. That's definitely an interesting option as well. On the Pelican side, no Drew Holiday means that we've got the value options. We can play Lonzo Ball, but that price is too much now. I, I know last time I said it's 6400 he had GPP upside, and he did. But 74 is probably where I draw the line. I, I will, I'll go back to Josh Hart for sure. Didn't do anything in the last start, but doesn't mean he's not going to do anything today. Foul, he was in foul trouble that whole game. You know, one of those going to get into value play down here. Um, Jackson Hayes just hasn't been playing enough minutes since Derek Favors has come back and played really well. If you're not playing Harden and Luka and can find the money for Favors, he's an interesting option. He's been doing quite well. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to personally have the money to get there. The game goes small. Kobe White could get minutes. That's not a worse value option to put in your pool. JJ Redick, 5K, just no real ceiling at that price. So that's the one player I'd probably pass on. And let me just see if we can pull up the Pelicans. See if what we get here. If we t put Brandon Ingram on and Drew Holiday off. Brandon Ingram, 1.34. Lonzo, fantasy point per minute. Josh Hart, 0. 0.8. That'd be really nice. I would take 0. 0.8 at 32 minutes for 24 fantasy points. Or, no, let's see more than that. Like 26 fantasy points. I would take that for sure. Etuan Moore, I don't hate, but the price is up. So, again, you can kind of see there's some decent potential value guard plays here. Uh, I expect this total to be pretty high. I expect it to be in the 220s once it gets announced. So that's definitely an option for us as we kind of look through these value options to try to find the right options to surround Harden and Luka with. Yeah, so this next game is going to have some very value ugly options. Um, very ugly value options. Uh, Utah minus 11, 218.5 total here. So uh, Marcus Morris and... Smith are questionable for the Knicks. This is a back-to-back -back into Utah for New York after L.A. This is an awful spot for the Knicks. This is really about as awful a spot as they can get. So, R.J. Barrett, 5,700, probably a little too much for me. This would be, if I play anyone from the Knicks, this is trying to find lightning in a bottle on the bench. Uh, Bobby Porter's got ejected in this game. So that's an interesting option. He could be ready to go, 3,800. Reggie Bullock could be ready to go, but boy, 
I mean, Reggie Bullock has to hit a ceiling somehow. I don't know how that's going to happen. So for me, it's really kind of a situation that I'm really only going to play in emergencies. Um, and it would probably be a guy like Bobby Portis, who averages a fancy point per minute, but doesn't normally play a ton of minutes. That can get some run at some run if this game gets out of hand. Um, for the Jazz, you know, the rest of the Jazz are priced pretty correctly other than Jordan Clarkson, 4600 Again, if this game gets slightly out of hand, he too could have a little more upside on the bench. But, again, it's not like I'm expecting Jordan Clarkson to go for 40 points off the bench here. It's a great spot for the Jazz, but I think they'll just kind of play everyone a decent amount of minutes. And, you know, if they get that big lead, they'll, they'll expand that rotation. We'll see a Niang or one of those other guys hop into the rotation. So, for me, it's really kind of just a Jordan Clarkson YOLO, Bobby Portis YOLO, and I, I don't have any money for any of the other guys. Like, you know, if I'm playing Luka and Harden, I just don't have money for any of these 5K guys. And honestly, there's really not anyone I really want anyway. It's not enough of these guys playing huge minutes that I feel confident in, so I'm okay with that as well. Last game of the night, this is where we're going to have a bunch of potential value options. Uh, Milwaukee at Golden State, Milwaukee 13.5 point favorites. D'Angelo Russell out, Kevon Looney out, Draymond Green is in, and Marquise Christ was waived to f- sign Damian Lee to a full-time contract. So he is no longer on the Golden State Warriors. Uh, for Milwaukee, uh, we've got Giannis probable. We've got George Hill probable, I believe. Yeah, he's probable as well. So for the Milwaukee side, you know, this, again, this game probably not going to be very competitive. So we're trying to figure out, you know, is this a game where Dante DiVincenzo is going to get those extra minutes? Uh, he's been playing pretty well. If he gets those extra minutes off the bench, could pop at 4,200. Uh, could be Pat Connaughton. Could be Kyle Korver. I mean, again, these are not very sexy value options. They're not my favorite value options on the board, but... This is the world we're in. If you're trying to play it in two of those stars, th- these are the type of guys you're going to have to give strong consideration to. Wes Matthews, that type of deal. Uh, I, you know, it also to to point, I want to point out Milwaukee's not been the most honest with their probable tags. There's definitely been a bunch of situations this year where they'll list a guy probable overnight and it gets ruled out. So if Giannis was to get ruled out, for example, all these Milwaukee value guys would open up immediately. National TV game against Golden State. I can't imagine they just wouldn't have announced it last night, but you never know. Uh, so there's always an option there as well. For Golden State, uh, this is, you know, I, the prices are starting to get to about right. Alec Burks is probably still a little too cheap uh, here. You know, shooters against the Bucks, they do give up a ton of threes. So I'm looking for a guy that kind of shoots a ton. It's really not Alex Burke, Alec Burks. Not really Damian Lee. Kind of is Glenn Robinson the third, who is normally my guy when... Uh, Russell's out, but even he hasn't been shooting a ton lately. But someone's gonna, one of these wings and guards is gonna pop a ton of threes. Actually, yeah, you know what? It, it, it might be my boy, Glenn Robinson the third. I can't believe he's called my boy, but um, I, I think it will be Glenn Robinson the third. 4700 super cheap. But I think these prices are fair. Barks, Lee, and Glenn Robinson the third, I think the, they're all fair. Uh, so that's definitely an option. Willie Colley Stein came back, so kind of just out on all the bigs. Um, I just don't really see the Warriors playing Draymond enough minutes where he's going to cr- crush this price tag. I-, I guess they could if Giannis plays. I guess it's a national TV game. I guess I can see Draymond carrying, but a lot of the times he's playing just 27, 25 minutes a night. He'll he'll throw in the random 36 when the Warriors are being super competitive in a game, but that just doesn't happen very often. So maybe like a Giannis-Draymond correlation, but even that, I don't think Draymond's worth the effort to correlate with. So let's just kind of, I'm just going to kind of quickly go through uh, the top plays in the slate. Obviously, Luka Doncic and James Harden. I do like Trey Young a lot. I do think Vucevic is a good option. I think Ryan Ingram is a good option, and so is Kyle Lowry. But James Harden and Luka Doncic could easily go for 75 apiece. And if they do that, it is just simply going to be very hard to catch up to that. So value-wise... Uh, we talked about Michael Porter Jr. We talked about Josh Hart. Uh, Gary Harris, I didn't talk about him. He's actually a, probably a decent option. He's going to play 35 minutes. Who knows what the ceiling is, but it does get you some nice correlation with Luka, and he definitely can shoot, so that's not the worst idea in the world if you want to get off some Michael Porter uh, chalk. D- you know, and then again, it's some Houston guys. It's Daniel House. It's Eric Gordon. It's Dante DiVincenzo. So 
John Clarkson. So you start getting all these value plays where, you know, again, you got to kind of make your decisions. Uh, but this is a fantastic slate. There, this, this is some news will open up. I'm sure we'll get some better value. And then it'll come to the question that if there's enough value opens up, we could get to the question of is Harden and Doncic better than uh, Harden, Trey Young, and Vooch, right? The, like you, you can find, you know, is Doncic in a value play worth that trade off? And that's where you know a projection, my projections will help me make that decision. But <laughs> I got to be honest, I, I like again, I'm going to try to keep it open mind, but. I'm going to do everything in my power to get Luka and James Harden together because I, I just know that's 120 to 150 plus, And if I can just find the appropriate value plays, and they're always out there. There are always guys in good spots. They're going to pick up extra minutes based on matchups and situations. So as the day goes along and on my Twitch stream at 3 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash the siege DFS, I'll definitely talk about the ones I've found so far. So check that out uh, as well. Um, again, though, if you haven't already, Please subscribe and like. Uh, these are going to basically be daily. Um, hopefully next week, uh, but I'm going to be uh, at a conference, uh, so it might not be every single day. But the goal moving forward is to get these out every single weekday. So please subscribe. Please like so I can go back to the people in charge and say, see, we should be doing these YouTube videos every single day. Uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure you check out all the other great content we got here on the Fantasy Cruncher YouTube page. Again, subscribe and like. I'm CJ. We'll see you next time.